Well, the biggest news on Wall Street this week, was, of course, was J.P. Morgan's $2 billion trading loss. With that have come calls to enforce the Volcker Rule. The Volcker Rule, you may recall, was included in Dodd-Frank, and it essentially forbids banks from engaging in proprietary trading if they take federal deposit insurance. In his conference call Thursday evening, uh, Morgan Chase CEO Jamie Dimon directly addressed the issue of whether the Volcker Rule applied in this case. Let's give a listen. We do believe you need to have the ability to hedge in a CIO type position and that that Volcker allows that. This, this, this trading may not violate the Volcker rule, but it violates the diamond principle. Welcome back. I am joined now by editorial page assistant editor James Freeman, one of whose jobs in life is to track the Volcker rule. It's like tracking the wild asparagus. Yeah, you know, it keeps me employed. It keeps me. This should go on for a few years. We hope so. Well, is uh, was Jimmy Diamond right that his uh, trading conformed with the Volcker rule? Volcker rule, or well, is that too hard to well, say? Well, we don't know what the Volcker rule is. You know, we may never know. This has been the uh, the difficult thing is when Paul Volcker, former uh, Federal Reserve chairman, came out uh, after the financial crisis and he said I have an idea mm -hmm. let's prevent these big Wall Street banks that uh, the taxpayers are standing behind from gambling in the securities markets uh, taking uh, proprietary positions meaning they're making investments for the house for themselves as opposed to doing a transaction to serve a client with taxpayer money as the backstop that's right and and so great idea we and others I think said excellent we got to get the taxpayer off the hook here uh, the problem is uh, uh, members of Congress, the Obama administration, could not figure out how to write that when they passed the Dodd-Frank Act. So they uh, basically punted it over to the, bureau the bureaucracies. And uh, for a couple of years now, they've been trying to figure out how you, uh, how you make calls like this one. Well, what, uh, for example, James, is the problem at the center of this? As you just described it, as you say, it sounds simple. Why isn't it simple? Well, because uh, once you get into uh, this kind of question, he's saying, uh, well, we need to be able to hedge. So, uh, for example, if the, if the bank uh, uh, has a bunch of commercial loans out and they feel like that's a risk, certainly there's some risk of default there, and they want to do a transaction to hedge against that risk, to balance it out, uh, people you know, getting into the weeds would say, uh, well, that seems reasonable. Another example would be uh, if you're um, uh, serving clients and you expect that your clients are going to want to buy uh, a lot of X, well, you, you might want to buy some of that uh, to have it available to uh, do a transaction when they expect it. So um, it's, it's getting down into the weeds that I think it, you're probably never going to have satisfactory answers. So a better play would be to just uh, have uh, bright lines and uh, and if you can't write a bright line, you know, maybe you break them up. Yeah. Well, there is, I think, a very serious issue about taking federal deposit insurance, having the back, uh, taxpayer backstop, and then doing this sort of trading. I think part of the problem here, James, is that, you know, the plain vanilla world of banking of 50 years ago simply doesn't exist. Finance, the world of finance is more complicated than it used to be. Right. And they're taking risks, and they have to protect themselves in some way. It's just normal that you would try to protect yourself from that risk. But I think one of the real issues here is the size of some of these banks. I mean, right. Jamie Dimon is saying, we failed here. We didn't do what we should have. Well, maybe Chase, like City, is just too big to keep track well, this of. Is, uh, this is why, uh, from the big bank perspective, this is really a terrible story because... Jamie Dimon is the gold standard for bank CEOs. He's the one guy who, who really uh, navigated a, a huge bank through the uh, financial crisis in fairly good shape. Um, if he can't figure out how to, how to run, how to manage risk across an institution this big, um, you, you really wonder who can. I mean, it's, he's sort of been the opposite of Citigroup, where people kind of expect them to fail periodically and need, need a government uh, uh, assistance of some kind as we look over uh, recent uh, history. Well, we have about 30 seconds. SEC Chairwoman Mary Shapiro said, be, be advised, all regulators are focused on this now, but I suspect they're just going to stay focused for a little while until they figure this rule out. Yeah, it might uh, it might take a different Congress. It might take a new law to uh, basically uh, bring back that uh, freedom to fail and, and give them uh, confidence to allow and yeah. to fail. All right. Well, let's hope that is maybe one of the pluses that emerges from a $2 billion trading loss.